Andrew, since this is only 15 minutes, I got one more question for you. How do you see the role of artificial intelligence? Yes, AI and machine learning evolving for genomics and diagnostics. This is a, a deep topic and a loaded one, but I'll do my best to, to give it uh, a high level here. Um, so when, a lot of times when we think about artificial intelligence, we're really thinking of like algorithms like uh, neural networks and you know, uh, unsupervised learning. And that, that requires just massive amounts of high dimensional data to, to work properly. And we really don't see that type of volume of data available in, in biomedical sciences, but, but we're able to use appropriate methods. Like, so for example, natural language processing works great, right? And it's pre-trained on, there's a lot of pre-trained models. So we can take those pre-trained models and uh, further train them on a given lexicon. So, you know, genetics and, and uh, therapeutic or in pharmacology to have these programs be able to scale the uh, consumption of scientific literature, right? And parse out and standardize that data. Once you parse out and standardize that data, now we have petabytes more data than we had before. So back to the original problem, it's like a, a, a positive feedback loop, right? Now we've generated more data that we can use to feed more advanced algorithms. And that can then feed more research questions that can then have the researchers using high throughput methods and high uh, throughput functional studies create the data to answer those questions. And, and that, that, that cyclic feed forward really just, uh, you know, will spiral uh, in a very positive way for the for for biomedical sciences in the industry, um, especially in genomics. Andrew, I'd hate to use the question evolve, but I think AI or artificial intelligence is helping and evolving the genomics and really playing a huge part in the diagnostics because it's going to be speed, efficiency, and we're just going to get better at it or at least put us on the right track for the answer that we're looking for. Definitely. It just needs to be done right. And um, and so it needs it needs it needs the care it deserves. It's uh, it, there's there's a reason you see it like in biology in like very discrete packets of functionality. And that is it being done right when you see that, you know, there there's no there's there's no like chat GPT equivalent for like, you know, scientific research yet. Though. That's a bit away. Not yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. I got to write this down. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it, it ChatGPT had a lot more information to train on um, because it had all of the biomedical literature, plus all of basically documented <laughs> human, uh, you know, documentation to, to, to work off of there, anything that's on the internet. So it's, it's, it's very robust, um, you know, it's for general use, but they're getting there. There's really creative ways people are using machine learning and AI in the space. And I've had the fortune of being able to work on some translational research projects with machine learning myself. Um, and yeah, it's a really exciting, really exciting time. Andrew, I got to wrap things up. So thank you for joining us for this PTP LinkedIn Live Lunch and Learn. And we're talking about streamlining genomics with AWS. Andrew, thank you for your time. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. All right, everybody, don't forget to stay tuned because we got more events coming up. So make sure you hit that like, subscribe, follow, whatever you can do on LinkedIn for PTP. And until next time, because guess what? We're out of here. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. Bye, John.